welcome to another episode of Winding Down. Today we are joined by our wonderful guest, Davika Pillay. Thank you so much for having us today. We are going to be tackling a topic on females in artistry. And please give a warm welcome to my co-host today, Masam Gilebuk. Well, thank you so much, Zama. Um, I'm really pleased and honored to be here today. And I just can't wait to hear more about you. I really do hope we're going to have an exciting, amazing um, episode. So, yeah, I can't wait to know more about you. Yeah, can't wait to <laughs> tell you about it. <laughs> Can you tell us what defines art, um, especially fine art? What defines art and how do people... Uh, specifically consumers relate to it? Um, fine art is considered fine art when you when you start using your intellect as well as your creativity mm -hmm. as a combination. Um, it also um, conveys a narrative of what you're trying to convey to the viewer. So fine art can be described in so many different forms, but um, it, it uh, gives you more value once uh, the artist applies herself, the intellect, the influence, the inspiration, um, and conveys a message to the viewer. Mm. Okay, I understood. Okay. Interesting. And where would you say, um, where do you derive your inspiration? My inspiration comes from my life experience. So mm. it's from where I grew up, um, what my parents were like, um, uh, what my influences were with the people around me, not just my parents and my family. So it could be influential people, like for me in particular, it's Madiba, because I am in Africa, I was part of the apartheid era. So all of these things come into play. So um, yes, I'm a little bit of the older generation, but I'm still young at heart. So I'd like to be able to convey a message to the younger generation now of all my influences that have actually happened like the bygone era, mm -hmm. but bring it out to the forefront so that they can actually view what I've experienced. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, interesting. So when, when you look at arts and, and, and the different expressions of art, we find that expressive art is more dominant. Your acting, your performative arts. What do you think uh, causes that? And how can that be changed to create a balance in the arts industry where it's not just performative art that is more out there as opposed to fine art and other forms of art? Mm -hmm. How can that gap be bridged? So art generally is very emotive. So it mm -hmm. conveys an emotion. Mm -hmm. If you walk around my studio and my gallery space and you look at all the artworks I've created, mm -hmm. um, a lot of the artworks are the emotions that I've felt at that specific time and place or I'm addressing a certain specific issue at that time. Um, so the emotion comes into play. So when the viewer views it, yeah. they need to, um, that emotion needs to filter through mm. from the canvas mm. to them so that they actually feel it. Connected and then when they picture. connect with that, mm. then you know you've achieved your goal because mm. that's a fine artist, mm. being able to convey that message through, through emotion. Okay, so you, you feel that the trick is being able to evoke emotions through your artwork. Absolutely, absolutely. If your art, if your artwork doesn't speak to the viewer, then you've lost the plot. I feel decorative art has a place as well in in um, in uh, society in general. You just want to put it there because it looks beautiful and matches with your cushion or whatever. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a designer as well, so... But you uh, missed the message yeah, behind. Yeah, so I believe that my artwork could... Um, have, uh, the viewer could have an emotive experience. Mm -hmm. At the same time, it could look beautiful and sit amazingly well in a space mm -hmm. without um, shouting out too much. So, um, I'd also like to know, considering now we are in 4IR or mostly online presence um, is very dominant right now. And do you feel as though, is it taking over uh, physical presence in, in art galleries? Um, here we are with COVID, the pandemic, whatever. And I mean, it's the new norm. So how do we transition from this experience that's gonna live with us forever yeah. um, 
and and move forward. So Instagram is the new gallery now. True. Mm-hmm. Um, Instagram, social media. So uh, the galleries, yes, they still are there to preserve uh, fine art and what art is all about. So galleries generally fetch a higher price. Um, running a gallery is more expensive. Mm-hmm. However, with this new norm, mm-hmm. um, Instagram is now the gallery. So the artist becomes uh, their, the, uh, their social media administrator. They mm-hmm. become um, a curator. They become, so you actually get to know the artist more personally. Because now you see, yes, mm-hmm. you're actually yeah. seeing their lives yeah. in like in my studio. Yeah. You are here in my studio. Uh, this is going to go out to people. They're going to yeah. get to know me better. Yeah. So every artist has a platform in which to express themselves mm-hmm. and absolutely be in that space of the viewer. So the viewer doesn't have to come to a gallery anymore. And it's yeah. less costly. Yes, this bourgeois <laughs> platform. <laughs> Of, yeah. um, you know, only um, certain people can come and have a mm. glass of wine and appreciate art. Is now Instagram is accessible to anyone and everyone. Everyone. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah. what 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 would you say is your strategy um, towards moving into social media? What have you done, or what kind of strategy do you have? Well, I had to reinvent myself like I've done all through my life. So every time, you know, life th- throws you a curveball, you reinvent yourself because there's no time to curl up and die. So I have re-strategized my way of um, the digital era. Mm-hmm. I've taught myself new skills. I've uh, uh, bought online apps and I'm, I'm actually trying out a whole lot of different ways to engage with my client, mm-hmm. with my viewer, yeah. with um, with everyone out there. So um, I've actually turned it into a business because mm-hmm. um, my work, I think, speaks for itself. It's of good quality. It's of good, uh, a, a high standard. And hopefully I'll be able to influence others out there okay. to follow the same trend. So. Yeah. You can do it. Your iPhone is is all you need these days. I mean, you can download any app yeah. and still apply, you know, and reach people. So, um, yeah. So welcome the new digital era, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. I think we've taken this conversation so far without actually asking you, how was your journey? How, did, how were you introduced to art? And when did you begin actually to create pieces and what inspired you to create those pieces? So here's the thing is that I I did not decide to become an artist. Um, Art has always been part of my persona. It's my personality. It's uh, I grew up with art. I've I've drawn from the time I could hold a pen, pencil or a crayon. So um, it's, it's a journey that's been with me throughout my entire life. Uh, You'll see some of my paintings, you'll see the waves, you'll see the ebbs and flows of life. Um, uh, But art has been a constant throughout my life. Mm -hmm. So um, I got to a point where I used to do art and give it away for free (laughs) as gifts to everybody. But um, and then I got to a point where I realized I could actually make a living out of this. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. So I started getting commissions. I started doing a lot of hospitals. there's a lot of other skills that I've picked up along the way, so I apply it, you know. Um, so, yeah, that's been basically my journey. And every stage of my journey introduced a new skill into and technique into the art uh, field itself. So I've experimented with lots of things. So as you, were, as you began working on your, on, your, on your art craft, did you feel that there was much support and nurturing specifically in the educational part of uh, our education system? Do you feel that it supports artistic people and their ideas and their creativity or they sort of have to find their way there because there's not much done when it comes to art? Um, yes, well, I did have my family support. So my family always supported me. However, lots of people thought that I was a bit crazy. Yeah. You know, going into the art um, field, deciding to become an artist or mm. thinking of earning an income from it mm. is it's it's a little bit risky yeah. so yes I had to um, own it mm. and decide okay this is my skill and mm. I can actually do it um, 
In South Africa, yes, it's a little bit of a struggle. Um, and I feel that I'm probably one of those people that have been driven by passion for what I do. So I've always pushed myself, reinvented myself all the time, um, rediscovered things. And in the years of all the, um, um, the jobs and careers I've had, I've picked up skills and I've, I've added it to my uh, catalog of works. And I find that during my journey, I've also influenced a lot of young upcoming artists. Um, art generally is not a consistent income for anyone. So I wouldn't advise anybody at this point to say, okay, I'm, I'm dropping school. everything. Yeah. No, you can't, you can't. Mm. You actually need to understand that you, yeah, you wanna to get to that point, yeah. but support is very important. Mm. And you need support from your country, from your family, yeah. from the people around you. It's very important. They need to believe in you. Yeah. So you need totally. to have a solid foundation, solid Absolutely. base, before you venture into doing art alone. Absolutely. Understood. But then do you not maybe feel as though if you are then educated, not only just have the talent, but if you get more skill and actually have a qualification, in that case, you would then have better opportunities of actually having something solid. Absolutely, I do believe that. I'm a self-taught artist, so um, I relied just on my skill, but I did also try start uh, the fine art degree. Mm -hmm. So I did de decide that you know you need you need the backing mm -hmm. of some kind of educational support. So you can't just go out on, an, on a limb and and um, and and do your art. Mm -hmm. Be that as, as I would say, is like it's not necessarily every artist that needs to have an education. There are some artists out there that have made it really big yeah. with just talent alone. Yeah. Um, but in this present current uh, environment that we are in, it's always good to have an education as a background. Yeah. Uh, it's a backup. Uh, either you're doing yeah, something. something yeah. yeah, it's either it's in the art field or you can decide to do something totally different mm -hmm. that's going to support your your art passion. Yeah. Continue with the art passion mm -hmm. as an ongoing mm -hmm. thing. And then your, your education is something that will be um, uh, your career that's going to yeah. give you a consistent income mm -hmm. so that it can support your passion. So it's very important to do that, yeah. Okay. yeah. You know, history history has shown us specifically in, in the art and entertainment industry because all these things link together. Yeah. It has shown us that um, in several cases, women tend to be taken advantage of, especially when they're trying to climb the ladder of success within the art and entertainment industry. Have you ever had that experience personally where you expected to... Uh, maybe sleep with someone or pay your way up in order to get something. And yeah. if not, if not, what is your view about that? And how can that be changed? Because it happens. We know it happens. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I personally have not come across any issues regarding that where I had to, uh, you know, succumb to any of that. Um, I am a very strategic person. I am very business minded entrepreneur. So um, I let my skills and my talent and my experience um, get me to where I need to get to. If I can't achieve something in that level, I do not stoop to that level. I reinvent myself and I try to find another path to where I need to go to. So, um, no, I personally have not come across that, but I would, I would say if any woman is um, found in that kind of position, they should not let themselves down in any way or undermine themselves because they are worth more. They are, they can, if they've got talent, they don't need to stoop to those kind of levels. A little birdie told me that um, <laughs> at some point in your life, you were in corporate and you were, you were a CEO. Um, so there's a stigma that uh, we know that um, uh, in workplaces mostly, um, women are actually play, I mean, paid um, lesser than men because probably of the work that they do, you know. So since you are a CEO and uh, a woman, so how did you treat your um, female uh, employees? Well, uh, you know what, unfortunately, 
um, that um, uh, issue with females and being remunerated less than mm -hmm. their yeah, yeah. male counterparts still exists. Mm -hmm. So it's always a fight. It's always a struggle to get to that point of being recognized for your yeah. skills. Um, and um, I personally would say that um, um, under my management, there's been, I've had a lot of females um, and I've actually been one of those people that were instrumental in um, uh, getting them to recognize their passion mm -hmm. and um, understanding that they can unleash their potential because lots of people subscribe to the norm of, okay, so this is the norm of how p women should behave. Mm -hmm. um, this is what we need to earn. And this is, uh, you know, we, we need to, if we, you're a cleaner, you remain a cleaner. And that's it. So I've always tried to upskill them. If, you, if you've got a passion, um, do a little course. Um, if you can't do a course, um, check with the companies. The companies could be um, doing an upskilling or training course that they could easily attend and it could be paid for the company. So you, you are stepping up that ladder within the company mm -hmm. and you're getting to the place you need to go, but you need to understand your passion and your value mm -hmm. in the company and that's very important. So I've always subscribed to the fact that while I am there, no woman should, should undermine her own abilities mm -hmm. by not listening to her own inner voice. Yeah. So. I just want to know, what would you like our viewers to know more about you? Um, how would you like to be known as a person who does art? And maybe do you have any words of wisdom or encouragement? For other artists? Hmm. For, yeah, for the young upcoming artist who has and shows some talent, I would like to say, firstly to the parents, encourage your, your, your kids. I mean... Don't put them down. Um, they're going to eventually become the lawyer, the doctor, the whatever you want them to become. However, art is one of those things that's going to actually give them a release. Uh, times when they need to um, uh, unwind and relax and get their, bra their brains um, uh, refocused. Art is something that's going to actually keep them balanced. So... Parents allow your kids to express themselves with art. Mm -hmm. Kids who are um, talented and have skills with art, I want them to pers persevere in their talent. Some of them may materialize to absolutely nothing, but mm -hmm. their, their careers may progress better because they've had that as a source of backing. Um, for those who actually have amazing talent, don't give up your day job. <laughs> because art is something that takes years to get to the skills that you want to get to and actually start earning an income from it. So I would say you've got to have a career behind you or a degree of some sort behind you. Um, but don't, don't stop creating art because even when you retire, art is something that's going to take you through those difficult times. Um, you could become an artist at a, the latter stages of your life, but not necessarily at the earlier stages. So things tend to happen at different stages, mm -hmm. and you've got to not force it. it. It will eventually happen. So don't be disillusioned if you can't paint right now. <laughs> it may just, sudden, something is going to click somewhere yeah, along the line, yeah. and it's going to all transition to... Um, Either you're producing something great or you're supporting your children later on in life because you understand the importance of art in, in life in general. From what I've been gathering since you began speaking, you, you basically believe that art is a way of life. Regardless of who you are, what job you have, what occupation you have, art needs to be there. It is a way of life. Absolutely. If you look at everything, the way, I mean, the way you dressed, Okay, the way the way you coordinate yourself, yeah. you may not think about it, but, but it's artistic. It's, exactly. it, it's artistic. Yeah. I mean, I, I you, you could wear a blue sock and a white sock. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
it uh, how you express yourself whether it's the how you what you wear the car you drive the home in which you live mm -hmm. how you how how do you um, decorate your own home you're not going to have a, a an interior decorator yeah. all the time yeah. to do it but an eye for something and coordinating something is it's important to have some kind of artistic background mm -hmm. not necessarily to go and do a whole course yeah. but even the little that you do yeah, at school, sense. yes. Yeah. The phone you buy, the way it looks, the jeans that you wear, the way it looks, the color, the style. Yeah. It's all artistic, the yeah. entire world. God's created the world. Yeah. He was artistic. Yeah. <laughs> he created us, so he I was like artistic. How you're explaining <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, so. Was actually artistic. <laughs> come on. So if somebody says to me, art is like, you know, don't even consider it. Mm. I think you're blind because mm. if you have eyes, art is everywhere, everywhere. in everything. Yeah. Social media, I mean, yeah. what grabs you? Mm. You know, not the mundane, boring stuff, but it's in your face. People are creating stuff. All that um, marketing, digital marketing, um, even if you decide to become a lawyer, you, eventually art is something that's going to help you transition into so what are you just backing uh, you know uh, going to a, a court and fighting a case on what the new the new norm is the digital era so yeah. lawyers are tending to like do art to understand art so that you can actually go out and I mean it doesn't you don't understand how it's going to relate till you're actually there mm -hmm. So um, I think art plays a very important role in every aspect I of our lives. With you. Thank you so much for having us. It was absolutely such a calming and relaxing. I really enjoyed our conversation. Absolutely loved it so much. Thank you so much for having us. You're most welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in to Winding Down. It was absolutely amazing. So just don't forget to take a sip on that wine. Over to you, Zama. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today in our wonderful conversation on females in artistry. Don't forget to drop your comments down in the comment section. We would love to engage with you. If you have any questions, we'll be more than willing to answer those questions for you. And don't forget to press the subscribe button down at the bottom. It was lovely having you today. And thank you so much, Davika Play, for having us. It was really interesting. We learned so pleasure. much. Thank you. Thank you. And cheers to that. Cheers. cheers. <laughs> thank you, ladies.